anybody else who wishes to record, please do. We'll put this on YouTube later. So start the recording. And our first guest today is Simon Dinnerstein, who is a very accomplished artist and um, even has several books done about him. Uh, we're going to start with a video that he made just the other day at an exhibit he uh, just opened at the Rockland New York Arts Festival. This tells a lot about what he has to say. So I'm going to uh, stop the share now and I'm going to go to a video and I'm gonna now uh, share that screen. Let me see here. Okay, share and here we go with the video. The drawing night scene one is in the collection of the Smithsonian American Art Museum. This past December, a very fine archival pigment print was published of this drawing. It can be seen in the print section of my website. Windows have been a theme of my work over many years. Looking out of windows, looking at windows, and also looking through windows at other windows. Night scene one depicts the world of a Brooklyn backyard. Light flickers and glimmers within these shadows. A tree reaches out and its branches extend upward. The drawing also made me think of Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window, one of my favorite films. A man sits looking out a window. He is, cover he is recovering from an accident. He keeps looking and looking at the windows across the way, trying to understand. The film speaks to the difference between casually looking and insightful seeing. In a way, James Stewart is a fill-in for all of us. Moreover, his quest is similar to that of the artist trying to make sense of what is out there. Growing up in Brownsville, Brooklyn, and spending hours as a child looking out of my second floor window has found a mysterious journey to night scene one. Okay, well, thank you for that. And now uh, we're going to go to uh, we're going to go to the pictures of. Hold on a second here. Okay, and Simon, uh, take it away. <laughs> you want to talk? Simon's going to talk for a few minutes about uh, three different pictures. So, can you put up uh, night scene one? It should be. It should be there. If it's not. Hold on, my bad. I don't see it. Okay, it's coming in a second. Uh, our first glitch, how about that? Okay, um, it should be there. Let me see here. Uh, share, uh, preview. Okay. There we go. And here we go. This is a um, archival pigment print, and um, I, I think this is a very new print process. So this is um, the best reproductive print process I've ever seen, and um, the prints are really remarkable, and they're done on archival paper, and um, they're amazing to, uh, it's amazing to watch these prints being produced. The prints go through a press and they're printed in vertical lines along the short side of tiny, tiny dots. And then the print passes through the press very, very slowly and yields this image um, the original drawing that this is based on is, as I said in the, in the video, is in the collection of the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Um, there are two other prints that I had done exactly the same size. Um, so could you go to the next one? So um, I think the the three prints are exactly 36 inches in height. The drawings and paintings are of varying sizes. 
but I had the prints made exactly the same size. Um, this was a, um, a kitchen that a friend of ours had on Third Street in Park Slope. And the kitchen had a curious quality. It, the kitchen had a door and a glass pane. And you look through the glass pane at the kitchen. So um, the piece, the actual piece has a door and then you're looking through the door at this vision of um, their kitchen. Could I see the third one? Yes. So the third piece uh, was an actual bathroom uh, that uh, existed in a studio that I had on 4th Avenue between 24th and 25th Street at the edge of Park Slope in Sunset Park. And um, we got this studio. Uh, every part of the studio was painted black. I don't quite know why. It was all painted black. We painted maybe three or four coats of white paint everywhere. We got to the bathroom, which was extremely small. Um, I said, let's leave the bathroom like this. It, it looked kind of interesting to me. And I had been, I was working on another painting at the time, but every now and then I keep looking at this bathroom. And um, so th this painting is actually eight feet high. And um, you can literally walk in to this bathroom. It actually had a door, but in my painting, it doesn't have a door. And you could walk in and go to the right and you would find the toilet bowl. Um, Should I go to the next picture now, Simon? Yes, yes. Oops, oh, hold on. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. right, sorry. So Steve asked for some pictures that were current in my studio because <clears throat> this, the thing that Steve <clears throat> had a sense about was this would be a, like a studio visit. So this is a, this is a, um, the drawing on a panel for a painting that I am working on. Um, and during this pandemic period, I've had the um, amazing good fortune to be able to work on this piece for maybe 150 straight days. Um, so this is quite a large piece. Uh, it, let me say a few things about it, but then I'll, I'll show you another shot so you'll see how large it is. But this is about 80 and a half by 83 inches. It's the, the drawing depicts my grandson at the age of four, surrounded by toys, images, images that he did, pictures that he did, um, trains, um, blocks, um, and dragons, and boats, horses, and fine art imagery. And they are um, configured in circles, and ellipses, and parabolas, and um, so it, I'm really very excited about the potential for um, this picture. And um, oh, and I should mention that I paint on wood panels. So this is one wood panel. And to the left of the panel, you can see some of the studies or the, the inspiration for some of the parts of the painting. So on the lower left-hand side, outside the panel, you see a drawing that my grandson did. So that's going to be part of the painting just inside. And then you see on the right-hand side, a drawing that my grandson did of 
my mother-in-law. And then you see... Um, my bad, sorry. Uh, then you see a, um, a, a, um, a train going off the screen. Then the next shot, okay, gives you an idea of how big this is. And also the actual light and dark or value resolution is in between what you saw before and this. This image seemed to me a bit light and the other seemed a little deep. So I thought to include this, but you can see how big this is next to me. Um, and the next one. Um, so, so there I am on a scaffold that my daughter and son-in-law surprised me with. Um, and I've never worked like this on a scaffold, but you can see how big this is. Um, the image is just slightly deeper than what you're looking at but you can see the scale here and um, the scaffold moves and um, it's a daunting um, project and um, I, hope I, uh, I hope I can do it. Well, I hope so too. Um, Simon, I'm curious, you've worked on very large scale images, but also smaller scale. You've worked here where you're applying whatever you would like to the surface, but you've also worked with printing processes and photographic processes. Do you seek out that variety or, did you, or is that a slow evolution or is one from long ago and one from now? What, what, what's the difference for you? Uh, I don't know if there's any difference. Um, throughout my whole career, I've worked uh, on drawings. Um, mm -hmm. it, consecutive years and um, I've always loved to draw and the drawing is embedded in my background. Some of the drawings are very large, some seven, eight feet high or wide. And when I was first starting as an artist, um, there was hardly anyone drawing on that kind of scale. Mm -hmm. And then I've done periods of time where I worked on paintings, all in a row, no drawings. Then I took it as a challenge to see if I could do some paintings that are very small, like one actually was a gift for my daughter, which is four by six inches. So four by six inches is probably smaller than this image on your screen. <laughs> yes. um, but I like the variety of it and I like the challenge of it. and. Um, I like listening to what calls me. Well, it's a wonderful variety. Um, do you have a preference now when you look back on prints versus paint? Um, not really. Um, I think my preference is what, what is the inspiration and how mysterious it is and Will it, will it call me and call um, the viewer? It, for instance, though this painting that I'm working on is of my grandson, I think the painting will be really successful if it is not my grandson, but any child, and even more successful, it would be if it was childhood. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, I have a question on a completely different subject. Um, I believe you are you do you teach and have taught a bit, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how teaching feeds your art, and it, does it contribute to your 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 um, creativity, or is it just a nice compliment? Um, I teach a class now. I've taught for many years uh, painting and drawing. Um, it, Where's at, that? I'm sorry. At, Where's that? at uh, Parsons School. Oh yeah, New School, mm -hmm. and then I taught in my studio. Same kind of class. A class that I teach now is in art appreciation. Mm -hmm. It occurs once a week for two terms, each term eight weeks, and it's about an hour, an hour and a half in length, and it's really an amazing class. I, I wish I could take the class, or I wish. I had a class like that 
45, 50 years ago uh -huh. that, I, that I could take. And it, it basically explores from an artist's point of view another artist's work. So this particular term, the first artist that we looked at is the amazing Spanish artist, Antonio Lopez Garcia. And we spent three weeks looking at his work and watching a film on him. Simon, I, I love what you said about you wish you had taken a course like this. I'm sure that brings, you know, years ago. That's, boy, that's the, that's the ticket, isn't it? Uh, what more could you ask for? That you're in, as enthusiastic about teaching the subject as you are about being involved with the subject. And I really think that's great. And also, if you don't mind, I'd like to end on that note because our time is up. That's great. Thank, you, right. so, thank you so much. Okay. All right. Well, thank you.